considered. After the commenting period is closed, I will announce a brief pause to allow the trustees time to read any comments that have been received. If you have difficulty or need assistance with e-comment during the meeting, please call 619-585-5689 and the library staff will assist you. Would the secretary please call the roll? Trustee Bruder. Present. Trustee Moreno. Present. Trustee Swanson. Present. Vice Chair Rubel. Present. Chair Ellison. Present. The next order of business is the consent calendar. I will now call for a two minute pause to allow the public to submit any final comments on items on the consent calendar. Trustees, as a reminder, please refresh the view on your screen to ensure new comments appear. Will the secretary please start the timer? Elin, do we have a timer? Yes, can you guys see it? No. Hold on. Should be sharing. Can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The commenting period for this item is now closed. Have the trustees had enough time to read the submitted comment? Board secretary, would you please announce for the record the number of comments received? There are no comments received via e-comments nor email. Okay. Um, do any trustees wish to pull an item for discussion? We have no comments. Um, so is there a motion to approve the items on the consent calendar? Anyone? A motion, a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. I have a motion by trustee Swanson and a second by trustee Bruder. 
Board Secretary, please conduct the roll call vote. Trustee Bruder. Present. Aye. Oh, sorry. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Moreno. Aye. Aye. Trustee Swanson. Aye. Aye. Vice Chair Rubel. Aye. Aye. Chair Ellison. Aye. The consent calendar uh, passes. Um, Five to zero. Um, public comments is the section in the agenda for members of the public to address the board on items that are not listed on the agenda. I will now call for a two minute pause to allow the public to submit any final comments. Trustees, as a reminder, please refresh the view on your screen to ensure new comments appear. Will the secretary please start the timer? Uh, the commenting period for public comments is now closed. Have the trustees had enough time to read the submitted comments? Board secretary, would you please announce for the record the number of comments received? No comments were received via e-comments nor email. Okay. The next item on the agenda is item 5.1 presentation by Southwest Strategies Outreach Consultant to the redistricting, uh, redistricting Commission on Chula Vista redistricting efforts. So chair, the presenter evidently has not joined us yet. Would you like to go to the second presentation first? Yes, so the next item on the agenda is item 5.2 presentation by library staff on cultivating racial equity and inclusion training program. All right, hello, that's uh, Erwin and me and to an extent Yilin as well, because she's actually participating in this program. Um, Erwin, do you want to say anything to kind of kick us off? Yeah, so. Um... We are, um, let's see what it looks like in the agenda, how much it has described here. 
but um, we are currently in an effort to um, we, we are part of um, the um, uh, uh, any effort to um, to kind of provide more uh, racial equity or, or work toward more racial equity when it comes to our our policies and our um, and our operations. And um, it's through a project. It's a California um, California State Grant, I believe. And it's um it's it's CREI and gosh it's cultivating re racial equity and, and, and inclusion, and so yeah, yeah. Um, we've been trained we've been doing um, multi day trainings on this since I believe June, and um and it's uh, run by a uh, government associate it's run by GARE I think it stands for Government Association for Racial Equity, and their efforts are um, trying to train um, government organizations to um to really look at um. Uh, Racial equity in their policies and in, 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 you know, really look at structural racism and and um, and how race is um, is kind of, you know, the, the hidden biases, the implicit biases that, that go on in um, in government in government and um, in organizations and how it affects um, operations, how it affects our um, community relations. So really just kind of in a nutshell, what we're trying to do is strive towards um, racial equity sort of like behind the scenes. Um, you know, there's a lot. They, one of the things that really struck me about the the, um, the trainings was that, sure, we could talk about individual acts of racism or racial equity in terms of just like how um, individuals experience it. But um, really, what's important is looking at the structures behind um, behind it. Um, so we have, you know, we got a really pretty good um, history on racial equity. And like, for instance, they use the example of redlining and how um, that. Type uh, the, you know the history behind redlining in the U.S. Um, created conditions for racial equity that we see now. You know, um, you know, in addition to slavery and and, and Jim Crow. Um, but really, what they were trying to get to is just kind of like at the bottom of like how um, how these things sort of like hidden behind the scenes that we don't even know about kind of contribute to um, racial inequity. So I think what's um, and I'm sorry I'm kind of like starting to go into like why why I love the the training, but I I don't know Phil if you wanted to kind of keep on going. <laughs> Yeah, just to give a little um, background on, on really who's doing this. So it's it's Irwin, me, Yi Lin, and then two of our senior librarians, Allison and Laura, who are participating in the training. Um, and it's with libraries all across the state of California. So they're close. The other local uh, system is Oceanside, but really the idea is to build this network of libraries. And the reason we're we're coming and talking to you is because as we're working on things to update our policies and procedures um, and just our practices, a lot of that's gonna come before you um, as we make changes to things like our, our code of conduct. Um, so what, what we're really looking to do is look for gaps in our services, um, discover current services and policies that are obsolete or maybe even harmful things that we're doing that we don't realize are causing harm. Um, we wanna make changes to better uh, reflect the needs and aspirations of our community and um, Erwin could probably speak a little bit about Harwood in a moment, but one of the things that we really want to do is, is look outward and get input from the community as opposed to us just saying, here's what the community needs. And uh, we want uh, we want to really have some, some desired results. And so we came up with two main statements. Uh, the first statement was we said, everyone is welcome. They, they're safe and they're seen and everyone is connected. And so that's really kind of where we're going with this. Um, and at this point, we're still there's 2 years that have happened so far. We're in the 1st year and that's what's known as the developing year. And then there's the 2nd year, which is the deepening year. Um, and the biggest uh, thing that we've done recently is we did a really large kind of um, data collection and analysis to get an idea of um, really kind of what it looks like in Chula Vista and. Um, and so, you know, of course, one of the things that came up was there's just, you know, a lot of a lot of discrepancy depending on the area of Chula Vista you're in in terms of who have access to resources and who don't. But um, there's just a lot of work that we still need to do, and a uh, big part of that's going to be community conversations. Which, Erwin, um, and maybe you can give a little bit about that since you uh, participated in the last one. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I want to go back to the participation of the. Um... And, and uh, Bill mentioned that, that your participation. So um, a lot of this is what we we really need the help of the community, and, and you're going going to be like our first um, sort of you know you are going to be our, our first community members to be part of this. So um, because it is like the day, all of this is kind of tied together. Like those uh, the the um, what the kind of outcomes that we want, um, and how race race equity ties into that, and how we can 
as a library, like built towards that. A lot of that really has to do with how you, you know, what you, you know, a conversation with you all and, um, and your thoughts on it. So, you know, and I think you did this before. For those of you who remember, we did do a, a quick community conversation. If you remember that was those questions about like what, um, what kind of community do you want? What's preventing you from getting there? You know, that, that those questions. So, um, so a lot of this is tied into what we were trying to do like years ago when we first did those community that community conversation with you at, at that meeting. Um, so, yeah, so I think that, you know, um, it's, we're still, like Bill said, we're still in the de development stage and we're really excited about it. Um, it's really important work. It's really tough work. There's, and, and Bill mentioned about the data that we have been trying to get. There's a lot of gaps still that we are not seeing. There's a lot of, um, a lot of data that we're getting about the, the population and, and how things are going, but there's not aggregated for race. So we don't know how it affects, how things affect people uh, in terms of race. And it's something that's really, we know it's a, it's a sensitive topic and but we need to understand, is there something there that we are missing that we are kind of unintentionally um, doing harm in terms of uh, racial equity um, that you know we need to identify and work and, and address. So all of that kind of gets tied together. So. And I didn't give you Lynn a, a chance to say anything, but did you want to add anything, you Lynn? Because um, she's one of our team members is in participating as well. Um, no, I do not. We covered it. Good job. Right. Does the uh, board have any questions for us? I have a question. Um, how are you uh, tying in race and class? See, that's part of the data that we're that we're looking at, um, because race and class definitely there. There's a relationship there, and there's also you know, and how all of that gets gets affected as well. That's one of those things that are just like one of the more complex um, aspects of this that we have to kind of look at. Um, again, we'll probably discover what that is and we'll give you kind of a better answer as we explore that aspect of it when we kind of go into that, the, the community uh, conversation part of it. Um, and then also a as we're doing that and more data comes in that we can kind of use, then we can kind of see like what's what's happening here, and I know I I know that's a, that was a question I think that a lot of people have asked as well because it does factor into it. It's a really intriguing question um, that we want to see at least in Chula Vista, like how how all that um, gets played out. And just to give an idea of some of the areas that we've been looking into and uh, pulling data, um, but it's as Erwin mentioned, it's tough because the the data isn't necessarily aggregated according to race, but. Things like adults who have not completed high school, uh, chronic absenteeism in school, renters versus homeowners, um, kind of uh, different areas of Chula Vista. So there's like the, you know, the east and west, but beyond that, like looking a lot more specifically, um, age, so residents 65 plus and, um, you know, residents with access to broadband or Wi-Fi and, and, you know, folks who are experiencing homelessness. So there's a lot of different areas we've been looking at and polling data. We also looked at some crime statistics. Uh, Yilin was helpful and, and got us some of that. Um, Irwin and Allison and, and Laura did a lot of digging into other statistics. Um, and um, it's just been it's been a lot of uh, sharing data and talking about it, but we're still in that discovery phase, really, if you if you will. That was one of the questions I had was. What what data is being collected is it sounds like it's being pulled from different systems. Yeah, so for instance, like or how the data is uh, being collected, I'm sorry, not what. Yeah, so we've been pulling it from everywhere we can census data, uh, Sandag, um, crime statistics, um, you know, places like that. There is kind of where we're starting, but we're trying to find data that's a lot more in depth. Um, looking, for instance, at you know, school data, like the um, uh, reports that are put out by the local school districts. As I mean, you would probably know something about that, Michael, since. Uh, you know, so a lot of that data is very helpful, but, um, you know, it's, it's just a matter of, we have all this data. So what do we actually do with it? What is it telling us? And we don't want to make, um, assumptions based on, um, partial data and, and kind of tie things together that may not actually be connected. Um, if that makes sense. 
I also want to speak to like that the, the assumptions part because I think that there you know a lot of people think like well you know Chula Vista is very diverse it is and you know but what you know that I think that might be like kind of like a um, I guess it's like a way for people to kind of like escape the the topic of like but you know there may be something here there you know that there is racial inequity um, just about like anywhere i mean it's just like there's unfortunately that's just the way things are are, are. it's baked into our society our society and, and our history so we have to like really look at that because if we don't then we're you know there's harm that could be done and and again going back to what the original intent was we we're, this is really to kind of improve our structures and like and work with them with with our system the things that that are hidden to kind of like um you know so that we can root that out and um and look to see like where where we can improve um, one thing I wanted to mention, and I know um, Joy may, may speak to this as well, is that, um, yeah, the, we can say that we're diverse. I mean, we can say that the, the, the library, the organization itself, we have a diverse um, uh, administration. Um, and, you know, and we should celebrate that. We are, you know, inclusive in, in that regard. But it's not a policy to do so. It just so happens that we are. What happens when Joy's gone? What happens when I'm gone? And, you know, it, where you know that there's no guarantee that this is going to always be like that so there has to be something and i think that was sort of like the original intent of this is that we have to have policies and something in place where we have an intention of making our organization and hope you know and all of you know hopefully all of the of chula vista the intention is to have um, a racial um to have equity and inclusiveness in our organization so i think that's really where it kind of started from from that philosophy of like when we're not here that needs to continue in some way or another, and that, and that we need to guarantee that that it's it's there in the future. So I have a question. You mentioned policies. Can you give an example of how this research could impact policy? Obviously, I know you guys are still gathering data, but say like another library where they use this data, how did they change policy? Well, we could say so. One thing that, and I don't know what it's going to look, look like yet, but I know that one thing, and this this isn't necessarily um, a racial, but um, there's a lot of uh, policy, like um, rules of conduct, um, library rules of conduct, that uh, when you read it, there's a lot in there that really is very discriminatory. You can't bring in belongings this this high. You can't. Um, you can't bring in like anything. You can't bring in any kind of wheel, anything, unless it's a stroller. You know, you or you can't sleep in the library. What does that sound like? Sounds like we like we don't want you homeless people here. So that's you know that's the kind of like thing that maybe the people who are making the policy just weren't aware of. But I think that's exactly what they were thinking about. Um, was that were were those kinds of people? Um, you know, and it may not be explicit, but it's like, well, it's obviously, you know, we can take a hint. You don't want us in here just by the virtue of us being homeless. So that's sort of like one example of it. And um, I'm trying to figure out another one. Like, I would say um, uh, the, the lack of um, the Spanish language materials, Spanish language, yeah. you know, um, it, that's, I don't understand. Like, you know, for me, it's like, it's really frustrating. We don't have more, but then again, I mean, there's also like staffing issues and all of that, that we don't have enough staff to translate, et cetera. So, um, so things like, I'm sorry, Bill, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say exactly the redirection you were going I say our collection development policy, taking a look at that and seeing, you know, where, what are our gaps in our collection? Where are we missing things? What is not reflective of our community? What is maybe even harmful to our community that we're doing with our collection development? Um, you know, so it's, it, we're really at the starting point of all of this and it's going to be a multi year initiative and something that we'll just continually be doing. Um, it's, I don't think there's ever going to get to a point where we say, ah, we've solved the problem. Here we are, but I think we're going to make progress and we're going to, um, you know, especially working with the other library systems and, and building that network. We're going to have a lot of uh, great support and, um, you know, really make strides in, in getting a lot more racially equitable and inclusive beyond. I mean, I think the practices of what we're doing are there, but we want to make it more firm in our policies and our procedures. Did that answer your question? Oh, okay. <laughs> Any other questions?
So we'll be we'll be looking to you all in the future in the future meeting to kind of continue this conversation. And as you know, we get our findings in, we'll we'll ask you. Um, you know, we'll probably do another community conversation with with you all. So we look forward to that. Thank you. Um, Yulan is our other presenter here. She is not, and I tried emailing her. I've not received a response. She did accept the meeting today, so I'm not sure. Okay, um, we can move on to the election for the chair for the year fiscal year 2021-22. Um, do we have any volunteers or nominations for chair? Our new people? It's going to be easier when we're in person. You did say we could nominate, right? Yes. Kidding, I'm kidding. I, I think as a group, we should all take turns chairing this um, so that we all feel the responsibility that we have. I've already done it, so I just, you know, push it out to the other members. <laughs> Chair Rubel, would you like to do it? You were the vice chair. Oh, you're on mute. Mute, mute, mute. How long does it go? My husband is going back to sea, so my. It's just for one year. <laughs> it goes back in May. If no one else is willing to do it, I will do it, but I just worry my schedule, my. I'm going to be single parent come May, so things are going to change. We'll have a, we'll have a vice chair. <laughs> you don't want to do it again? I think this is going to, uh, I've done it for two years. Okay. I, I'll do it. I accept. Then I'll do the chair. vice chair. I'll do vice chair. Does anybody okay. else want to be nominated? <laughs> um, is there a motion to elect Vice Ru or Chair Rubel? I or, motion to elect. What's that, Myra? A motion. Okay. So, motion to elect Jasmine for chair for fiscal year 2021. Motion, um, Myra has moved to elect Jasmine. Is there a second? I will second. Okay. Um, I have a motion by Trustee Swanson and a second by Trustee Christian Moreno. Um, Board Secretary, please conduct the roll call. Trustee Bruder. Trustee Moreno. Aye. Trustee Swanson. Aye. Vice Chair Rubel. Aye. Chair Ellison. Aye. So the election passes five to zero unanimously with Trustee Rubel as our new chair for 21, 2021-22. Um, the election, the next item is election of vice chair. For fiscal year 2021, 22, and I believe I had volunteered. Just as a backup, Do we have any more volunteers or nominations. No, um, is there a. Motion to elect Chair Ellison as vice chair for fiscal year 2021-22. I motion. Is there a second? I second. I have a motion by Trustee Rubel and a second by Trustee Swanson. Um, board Secretary, please conduct the roll call vote. Trustee Rubel. Oh, I mean, sorry, Trustee Bruder. I forgot you. Trustee Bruder. <laughs> Aye. Trustee Moreno. Aye. Trustee Swanson. Aye. Vice Chair Rubel. 
Aye. Chair Ellison. Aye. Um, the election passes unanimously as vice chair for fiscal year 2021-22 is now vice chair Ellison. Um, the next item on the agenda is staff comments. Does the city librarian have any items to present? Good evening, everybody. I just have actually two reminders. Um, the first being that we're actually going to have our first um, recreation class that's going to be hosted on the deck. It's actually urban line dancing and it begins next week. Um, I believe it's 6 p.m. on Wednesdays and you can actually apply right on the recreation um, website. The bookstores at our, for our friends of the libraries are actually set to reopen for August 1st. So those should all start opening as well. And you should start seeing some more programming coming from us this coming month. So um, that's all my updates. Thanks. Very cool. Um, are there any comments or discussions from the trustees? I just wanted to say how great it is to see programming and activities happening on that deck. So it, it's just been really cool to see and hear about. Very nice. Um, next item on the agenda is the chair's comments. And I just can't wait to meet in person. Euland mentioned a possibility for next month. So Let's cross our fingers for that. Um, trustees, do you have any comments? You Lynn, has our presenter showed up? She has not, so I will reach out to see if she wants to reschedule for the next meeting. Okay. I am going to close the meeting. It is 4.35 PM. Um, I'm adjourning this meeting to the next regular meeting of the Board of Library Trustees on August 18th, 2021 at the Civic Center Library, located at 365 F Street. Thank you, everyone. If you want to give me one moment to um, stop the recording. Okay. okay.